Well, Belgium's faced a lot of harsh criticism for the way it gathers and shares intelligence, and much of that is actually pretty fair. But if you step back and look at what authorities here have been able to learn in the past 40-some-odd hours, it's actually pretty stunning. Consider what Nala was talking about, that explosives were left behind in the apartment. We now know why that happened. When those attackers called the cab for the airport, they asked for a large car, but only a small one showed up. So they couldn't get all of their bags into it, and they left a big one behind, and in it was a bomb. That was a win for investigators. It helped them to look at the bomb, what it was made of, and look for perhaps a bomb maker's signature. It also told them that it was a peroxide-based explosive, something called TATP. It's sometimes known as the mother of Satan explosives. This is something that, that gained a, a bit of sick notoriety after 9-11. It's what the shoe bomber tried to use. It was used in the London attacks, in the Paris attacks. It's very unstable. Uh, if it's handled improperly, it, it can blow, just a few grams can blow someone's hands off. But the ingredients themselves are very easy to obtain. They're benign on their own. It wouldn't really arouse a lot of suspicion if someone went shopping for some of them. And so investigators realize this is a favorite tool of ISIS, and it tells them a lot potentially about where and how this was made. You know, Adrian, as we're learning more about the bombers, you're seeing a troubling aspect. Well, that one's actually pretty disturbing. I was speaking with one of Belgium's premier extremist trackers tonight, and he says, if you look at the case of the two brothers who blew themselves up, they don't fall into any traditional pattern of what investigators were really looking for within the last several months or so. These were just common crooks. They were thugs. They were guys who were probably turned in jail and just joined the likes of, of ISIS and stood alongside Salah Abdeslam the way they would join any sort of other gang. There's no evidence at all that they were fighting for any sort of ideological cause. They were not believers, if you will. They don't fall into the pattern of people who were recruited by some of Belgium's most notorious recruiters. And so that's a bit unnerving for authorities here. It tells them that they even have to start looking at common criminals differently. And it just complicates everything yet again.